everyone. My name is Yulia Vertanita. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Cognitive Science and Artificial Intelligence at Stillbrook University. I work on a project where the goal is to create a virtual human. And today in my presentation, I will explain what I mean uh, by virtual human and also talk about some of my research where I studied how we real humans perceive the virtual ones. So to get the concept of virtual human in place, let's start with something that is much more familiar, robots. Most of you would have seen a robot either in real life or in a movie. Many of you, I believe, are becoming more and more accustomed talking to your devices, perhaps not yet having quite meaningful conversations as this guy in movie heard, but this may well come in the future. But today I won't talk about disembodied artificial intelligence. My talk is about virtual humans. And actually there are many names to call this technology, such as embodied conversational agents, virtual agents, intelligent virtual agents. I like calling them virtual humans. These are software entities, more or less intelligent and more or less autonomous. And they are meant to have uh, conversations with humans uh, via natural language and also uh, using nonverbal uh, means to communicate, such as facial expressions, gestures, uh, gaze. And quite importantly, they have an embodiment. Some 15, 20 years ago, this is how they looked like, pretty much cartoon characters. These days, they are starting to resemble more and more actual humans uh, due to advances in technology. Uh, but then the question is, if um, those faces uh, of virtual humans looked human-like to you, wh why uh, do we want to have a human-like face for an entity that is definitely not a human? And actually the answer comes from some of the research in robotics. Uh, so for example, with robots, we saw that uh, when we have imperfect human likeness, uh, people get negative reactions. So their reactions to uh, a face that is imperfect, almost like a human is negative. Uh, we get this eerie sensation. So this is one of the reasons, the reason why we would like to have human-like face for virtual humans. And in my research, uh, I set out to answer two questions. So looking at these faces of virtual humans created with the advanced technologies, uh, does that mean, um, are we already not able to distinguish these faces from the actual human faces? That was one of the questions that I was interested in. And also, what in the face makes the, uh, the face appear human-like? Where does human likeness reside in the face? So I did some experiments. In one of the experiments, I had a pool of different images, uh, human faces, uh, virtual human faces, and also objects that look like uh, the face, resembled faces. And I gave participants to rate these images on human likeness. What I found was that actually the virtual human faces, they were not perceived as human-like as the actual faces, even though uh, they looked pretty decent. And then um, I wondered exactly what is responsible uh, uh, for this perception of human likeness. So we did some image processing and what we found in that analysis, we found two features to be influential for the perception of human likeness. One of them was skin texture. In humans, skin texture is not uniform. We have small wrinkles, lines, imperfection, pores. No one knows how many holes you have in your skin, but you're seriously perforated. This was in stark contrast to the uh, skin texture of virtual humans uh, that was uh, smooth. Another feature that we identified was the eyes and specifically these highlights in the eyes, corneal reflections as they are called. So we found that uh, these reflections 
that uh, real humans get when there are light sources in the environment and uh, the surface of the eye being uh, smooth, you get these reflections. So uh, those were less pronounced in the virtual human faces compared to actual human faces. So these two features seem to be very important for perceiving human likeness in the face. And actually I put them to the test. What I had, I uh, had altered uh, images of real humans. So again, I had a pool of different images of different individuals and I systematically changed two features. I altered the eyes, uh, removing the reflections of the eyes and I altered the skin, making the skin texture appear smooth. And I also applied both changes to create the face uh, without, the reflect, uh, without the reflections in the eyes and a smooth skin texture. And what I found was uh, that these features were highly important for perceiving uh, the face as human-like or not. And especially uh, the eyes were crucial for perceiving life in the face, for perceiving human likeness. So then now you may say to me, well, great, we know that the eyes and uh, the skin texture are very important for perceiving human likeness, but so what? Why, why does this matter at all? So like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there are cases that actually uh, the entity that is not alive uh, for it, for its perception, human likeness is, is important. So human likeness uh, is important as a first cue to also infer that this entity might have a mind uh, behind that face. And this is especially cru uh, crucial in uh, several applications or in several domains. So if we wanted to apply our uh, virtual human to healthcare, uh, where we know that uh, building trust is very important, uh, we would like to, to have this uh, virtual human looking human-like, uh, which would then promote seamless communication between a real human and a virtual human. And uh, like uh, healthcare, other domains would be tutoring or sales. So there are different, uh, many different areas for which uh, this perception of human likeness is quite at the core of communication. So uh, today you have learned what features engender this perception of human likeness and why this may be important. So thank you for your attention.